voices, but there is something. Amanda Snatch was the final straw. So can we begin by talking about how the idea for Bandersnatch came about and what drove you to want to make an interactive cinematic experience? Well, uh, Netflix, uh, we had a meeting with them and they showed off some of their interactive technology and said, would you be interested in using this for a Black Mirror story? And we nodded and said, that's very interesting. And then we left the room and went, no way are we doing that. <laughs> um, and then annoyingly... Several weeks later, an idea came up that would only work in this way. So that was sort of where so it came from. So we had to do it. <laughs> we were <laughs> doomed, doomed ah. to do it. Yeah, if only we knew then what we know now. now. <laughs> in what sense? But it all worked out really great, don't you think? Oh, I hope, oh that's kind of you to say. It was just very difficult, mm, you know. It's very complex. And, and, and the, com the complex thing was trying to actually simplify it and make it feel interesting and varied and have all of the tones that you would s expect in a Black Mirror series mm. but still making them feel as if they can coexist in a whole film. Mm. So it was, it was, that was probably the hardest thing I think. Mm. Yeah, but yeah. I, I'm confident, I, I feel that we achieved that, that you, you that Stefan feels like a crad credible character and consistent all the way through. Mm. So that when you see him with one ending, you want to see him explore another ending, but you know it's the same person and you those decisions all feel true to his character. Mm. Mm -hmm. oh, I, I'll go along with that. <laughs> oh, I agree with that. Good. And I was wondering about how you envisage the uh, viewer experience to be like, considering it's so, the flow of the story is so choice-based. Do you think it works best watched alone or with others? Um, there's not much time to make your decisions. So that, that's, it's a different experience if you watch it in a group. Uh, then obviously there's going to be a lot of shouting mm. uh, every, every, every now and then, <laughs> which is the best way to watch anything. Um, certainly you can't, I guess, you, what you can't do when you're watching this is sit there with your phone, like go, oh, because uh, yeah. if that happens, he could, have, he could have jumped off a balcony by the time you... <laughs> You've finished scrolling through Instagram, um, or whatever it is that people do these days. Um, so, so it, it, it slightly it slightly changes. And uh, what was the writing process like? I wonder if it was similar at all to Stefan's frustrations of trying to map out something so complex. It what well, I mean, yes, trying to work it out. I had to learn. Like, I had to learn to use this thing called Twine, which is an interactive fiction like coding language, just to write the story outline. Um, and so from there, that point on, it got more and more complicated. Normally with the story, you're trying to simplify it, make it, it shorter and tighter. With this, it kept expanding sort of sideways as, whoops, as you think of new things and knock microphones yeah. over. As you think of new things, you kept, it was, it was possible to add them. And then that, that, the headache of that then affected everyone throughout the whole yeah. process. It sort of lots, spread of, out throughout. Ha lots of heads in hands going, yeah. where are we? What happens if you do that? But if I go there, mm. you know, it was just constant confusion. There was a say. there was a moment when we were doing the final sound mix where we were sort of listening, watching a sequence, and then we, we were adjusting the sound of a telephone. I remember, and then Russell, <laughs> the producer, suddenly went, "Hang on a minute! I've just realised it's no longer possible to even get to this <laughs> section." We were like, "Oh, yeah." So that sort of thing would happen. 